every voice we sing it out. And we love you, and we can't get enough. All this is for you. Come on, we sing it again. We sing it out. And we love you. Yes, Jesus, we love you. We'll never stop. We can't live without. Think of all you've done for us, Father. We love you, and we can't get enough. All this is for you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Come on, don't be afraid of the space with him. If there's something that you're needed from the Lord, just go ahead and lift it up to him right now. He knows our burdens. He knows what we've carried today. To God, we give it to you. Every hurt, every pain. He knows what you saw last night. He knows what you're walking into this morning. But he's holy. He's the restorer. He makes all things new. All things new. All things new. Yes, you do, God. Mm. The King of Kings, he wants to meet with us. Mm. So we receive you, God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Yeah. I breathe the presence of the living God I take the goodness of your love I lean in closer to my father's heart I trust and who you say you are you are alive living in place, speaking and healing, your fullness and glory is right here before me, you're the living God, the living God, you are, you are, you are, oh. joy that's found in you alone I cling to 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we speak life that you are a living it. God, we speak that life into our situations. Lord, we speak that life into our struggles. Father, if we are coming into this room with uncertainty, Father, you are a living God, and we speak your life into that situation. If we're coming into this room with hurt or heartache, we speak your life into that situation because you are a living God. If we are coming in with shame or worries, we speak your grace and your life into that because you are a living God. Father, we love you. We give you today. We celebrate what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, high five somebody as you take your seat. Let's love each other this morning. Hey, my name is Ben. If you're newer to the bridge or you don't know me, I would love to have an opportunity just to meet you. I'm usually at Next Steps right outside this door here. Come and find me. I would find it to be an honor if you'd just swing by and say hi. I, uh, I love it. I love it. It's been a big last week in the Bridge Church. 15 years. We had the kickoff of small groups. God is doing some big things here. Small groups have been awesome. Bridge Church, can I tell you what you're doing? You are investing in doing life in circles together, and it is huge. I hope you're growing closer to each other. I hope you're feeling more connected because of small groups. And hey, if you've missed small groups, if you're like, shoot, I didn't get signed up, it's not too late. Let's get you in a small group. You can come talk to me or you can still go online. I want you to have the opportunity that so many others are taking this semester in small groups. Check this out, guys. You've done some great things. We have 87 small groups. That's a record. I can't even believe it. And listen to this. 963 spots have been filled in small groups this semester. I, I don't even know what to say. It's, it's phenomenal. You guys are awesome. Um, I do want to, can I tell a couple wins from small groups? It's week one and I've got wins. It's just crazy. Um, so somebody, there's an FPU group, which is an amazing group. It stands for Financial Peace University. And they, they're leading a group this semester. And, uh, and somebody who took it in the past actually reached out to them. And they said, hey, I just want you to know I've done baby step one. I've done baby step two. I am on my way to financial freedom. This has changed me. And I am praying for your group this semester that they that people who are in it will see the same sort of freedom and life in their finances that I have. I get to be a part of a freedom group too. And this freedom group, somebody texted me after the first week of it and they said, check this out from my homework. If people are texting me about their homework, you know God's moving in that group, right? That's huge. So guys, keep praying for small groups, keep investing in small groups. God is moving in them. God's moving in a lot of other areas at the bridge too. So we've got some bridge news. Let's check it out. Hey, good morning, Bridge Church. We are so excited that you are joining us today. Hey, I want to turn your attention. Hopefully you got one of those programs on your way in. Hey, right now, take out the connector card that's in there. <laughs> Maybe you hear this every single week. Hey, let this be the day. You take out that connector card and Maybe you're joining us for the very first time. Maybe it's one of your first few weeks at the bridge. I'd encourage you to fill out that front side, just writing down your information. We just wanna know who's joining us today. But, but for every single person watching right now, hey, flip it to the, that back side and just look at the prayer and praise portion. We wanna know, how can we be praying for you in this season? What's something maybe right now that you are celebrating that we can cheer you on? Uh, we just really wanna come alongside you in your life as your church. What, what are you celebrating? What do you need prayer for? Because we wanna be in it with you. And once you fill that out, you can actually turn that into the blue joy boxes at the ends of the auditorium as you leave the service. Here at The Bridge, we really have a huge heart for missions. And we really believe one week on a mission trip has the potential to change our lives and, and really to have a kingdom impact all across the world. And so we're really excited to share all the upcoming trips we have in 2023. And so we're excited to tell you about them at our Kingdom Builders Trip interest meeting happening next Sunday at 6 p.m. here at The Hub in Ottumwa. And, and so if you're interested in any of our trips, Nicaragua, 
Cambodia, Yucatan, Baja, Israel, like Uganda, Cambodia, all these trips we're super excited about and we want you to know about them. And so if you're someone who's maybe been on the fence about a trip before, maybe you don't know anything about a trip, but you're kind of curious, anyone, everyone, we'd love to have you come again to The Hub next Sunday, September 25th, 6 p.m. We hope to see you there. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service. That's got me moving. How we doing, Bridge Church? I am so excited to jump into a brand new series. Uh, what's the change for? And uh, I want to I, I want to kind of set you up when we, when we're moving in this series. Today is going to kind of be like the, the the basics, the 101, even some 201. Next Sunday will be 301, 401, and then watch out the third week of the series, like. It's, it's like it's application, it's practicum, and so I'm super excited about that. Uh, but before I get any further, could you help me welcome Centerville, Fairfield, people watching online. Come on, come on. Pastor Tommy, Pastor Craig, thank you for leading where you are along with so many other friends. And uh, I, I want to tell you, one of the things that uh, happened last Sunday was Vision Sunday. And I, I told you, I had so much. And, and part of me, when I have a lot of information, like my joy level like goes down because I'm trying to remember. I don't know if I'm the only person, but like when I'm trying to remember more stuff. I'm, but like I'm, I'm, there were things I just didn't even get to last Sunday that I want to I, I wanna, I wanna every once in a while tease out another one or two of those things. And so one of, them, one of them is that we are a part of an organization called ARC, Association of Related Churches. And it's a church planting network, not a denomination. And, and, and here, here's their heartbeat. They want to plant more life-giving churches, and they want to connect pastors to keep pastors healthy. And we're like, we like that. That's super great. And, and, and so today, nine churches are starting in the United States through the ARC uh, uh, network, and, and we, we annually give money to this. And I want to let you know of one in particular, just in case you know someone looking for a church in Ankeny. Uh, this is RJ and Kayla Johnson. They started Limitless Church today. I want to tell you, like, this is, this is exciting. So if you know anyone in the Ankeny area that is looking for a church, I would encourage you to find out a little bit more about Limitless Church. All right, so let's jump in to today's uh, message. And I, I got to tell you, there's like these there's like three competing thoughts in my head, which is good news for you, bad news for me. Because I don't know which one's going to win. But you just get to like watch me like, oh my goodness. Right. Because I'm so excited about this. I, I hear in church all the time, Jesus wants to change you. Or, or like there's, there's change out there. And, 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 and your life can be different. And, and he's going to transform your mind. And all of these things. And, and they're all this. And I'm like, but, but what's the change for? And, 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 and that really led me to this question. What would you like to change about yourself? Like, think about for a moment. What would you like to change about you? Notice I didn't say your spouse. Or your boss, or your kids, or your parents, your coworker, your dog. What would you change? I got two of them. I'd change a lot. We'll just, we'll just keep that alone. But I, I think most of us, when we have this question of what would I want to change about myself, there's a little bit of intrigue. You got a little bit of a desire. There's, a, there's like, yeah, I could lean into that. And I think it's because there's, there's a you you aren't yet that you hope to be. Like there's a little bit more or a better version somehow that you haven't arrived at. And, and, and I want to tell you, this is a question I ponder all the time. Like, I'm trying to get better at being me. I'm trying to get better at being a, a father, a husband, a, a, a leader. I, I, I want to be a better follower of Jesus. I want, I, I want to be a better friend. And, and, and can, can we agree there is an unbelievable amount of information helping us 
to achieve whatever the change we want. Like I'm a reader, you, you know this, and I, I'm, I, I'm reading books, I'm listening to podcasts, that I'm watching YouTubes on what to do to get the change. Now what's crazy is that, like if I want to change a doorknob on my house, which literally I had to watch two YouTube videos to figure out how to switch four screws. There's just four of them, but like I was like, I don't know what to do. And, and, and so you watch YouTube, tells you what to do, and you can do that. But when, when it comes to things about you, your personhood, maybe some attitudes, maybe some, some, some habits, some ways that you, you, you want to achieve maybe something vocationally or physically, maybe it's spiritually, like I would say you have an abundance of access to what to do. You just are missing the power to do it. And there's the great disconnect when you're trying to change you. You know what you need to do. It's like, stay off your phone more. But like, you don't have the power to do that. It like, just is like, some of you just had a phantom vibrate right there. You're just like, does my phone ring? No, it, it, it wasn't even buzzing, but you had to look because, you know, maybe. It, 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 I would say there's many things about you that you're like, I know I should eat better. I know I should read. I know I should pray. There's these, uh, you know what to do, but you're missing the power. That's what I want to kind of lean into today. And I'm on this journey with you. In fact, I'm so adamant about this. I started a small group with men for the sole purpose of working on changing some things in me. Here, here's, here's, the, here's the, the genesis. I, I remember Barnabas, which the Bible says he was a good man, full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit, and many came to the Lord. So our small group, we're meeting and we're trying to come up with what's one thing that we can do to work on our faith? What's one thing we can work on to be good? Because he was a good man. And we'll meet together and we'll trust the Holy Spirit will help us. That's, that's it. And so, so I, I'm on this journey with you trying to navigate some change. And, 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 and it, it keeps coming back to this. I, I, so often I know what to do, but I don't feel like I have the power to do it. And, and, and so here's, here in, in like a simple form, the bottom line of today is like Christ offers us the power to become. And here, here's the part that I think, I think many of us don't want to hear, admit, or sign off on. Christ offers the power to become who he wants us to be. And many of the challenges I wonder if we're facing are because we're trying to access the power of God for who we want to be. And we're missing that he has someone he wants us to be. This, this, this will land one way or the other. Like either you're like, okay, I need, to be, I, need to, I need to be transparent enough to say that there are times where I don't want what God wants. And, and, and if you want something different than what God wants, can I tell you, the power is limited. And you can still walk towards it. But then when you pray, it might feel empty. Because God is offering us power to become who he wants us to be. Now, that's way different than the cultural norm where you get to be who you want to be. And so I, I, I just recognize we're always living in this tension of the kingdoms. There's the kingdom of heaven and then there's the kingdom of fill in your name. And Marty's kingdom loves to get what Marty wants. The comfort and, 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 and the laziness and, and the food that doesn't put on weight. Like I, I, pursue, I pursue my agenda. I, I want I selfishly things to happen in our home the way I want them. And so I make that clear sometimes in unhelpful ways. And I'm wondering why more people aren't navigating to kind of come around my kingdom. But they make it clear. It's because my kingdom is broken. My kingdom is selfish. My, my, kingdom, my, my, my kingdom is pride. My kingdom doesn't build others up. And, and so inside Marty, this pastor you see before you is this, like, I'm trying to come more in line with, with the kingdom and the person that Christ wants me to be. Now, this is a story as old as time, Disney might say. And I, I want to give you a little bit of refresher for those of you who aren't really brushed up on your Old Testament, okay? I, I love the Bible, and so I want to I kind of give you a snapshot, and I, I, I'm going to share these in different parts. But the people of God 
who he chose to help everybody in the whole world hear about him, they found themselves in slavery, a place called Egypt. This is, this is how the story of Exodus, the second book of the Bible, begins. And, and God rescues them in a powerful way out. I, I, I've shared this recently. So, so they're out of Egypt on their way to the promised land. They take a pit stop at this place called Mount Sinai where he gives them the Ten Commandments. And he gives them instructions for the tabernacle. Because again, God wants to be with his people. Okay? So they eventually wander for 40 years. That would be the book of Numbers. And then you have Deuteronomy where basically Moses gives three speeches. He, he tells them their history. He tells them the laws again. And he gives them blessings and curses. Moses dies. Next book of the Bible is Joshua. And it's Joshua's job to walk into the promised land. And, and, and God said, I'm going to be with you like I was Moses. To which my mind goes, all I see is Moses had hell on earth. People tried to kill him left and right. Like, yeah, I mean, it was, and, and, and God's good news to Joshua is like, you see how I was with him? I'm going to be with you like that. Joshua's like, cool, you know. And so Joshua leads the people in, and they start, they start grabbing a hold of the territory. And then you get this next book of the Bible, and this is where I feel like this is where we are, okay? This is the book of Judges. And I didn't, I didn't know I was going to go here, so we'll just trust these notes, if that's okay. I'm just going to open up to Judges. And Judges tells this bizarre thing that I think is really relevant, because it's something that can happen at any point in time. But in Judges chapter 1, you've got, uh, they take the land, and then Judges chapter 2, they have this moment where Joshua sent the people each away, and they all took possession of land. And then it says, you know, Joshua died at age 110, and they buried him in this place. And now here's verse 10 of chapter 2. After that generation died, the generation that took the land, the generation that, that knew the stories of, we once were stuck in a horrible place, but now we're set free. Another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he'd done for Israel. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight, and they served other gods. So, so, so get this. You've got a people who were set free. But after they were set free, they found themselves wandering back to the ways of how they used to not follow God. I know that's none of us, but perhaps, perhaps you've had a moment where you acknowledge, God, you are my Savior. And then you found yourselves falling back into, but I don't care. All right? This is Judges. Now, what's crazy is Judges follows a four uh, line of progression. The people rebel. What would be the rebellion? They don't want the power for what God wants for them. They want the power for them. They don't want the land to be a place where other people can come and hear about God. No, no, no. They, they're selfish in all of this. And so the people rebel. And so what God does to try to woo them back, nudge them in the right direction, as he allows hardship to show up. And so they find themselves under attack by the Philistines or the Midianites and all these different, different people groups. And God allows hardship to show up. So the people rebel. That's one. Then, then they face hardship. Huh? All right? So then you know what the people do? They cry out. They're like, this is hard. This isn't the way I wanted it to be. God, help us. And he's like, oh, they're looking for me again. And God sends a deliverer. All right, so that's the book of Judges. It, there's 12 total judges, and, and there's just this rotating pattern, okay? I'm, I, I, want, I want you to grasp this, all right? And so the first judge, his name was Othniel. Cool. Then Ehud. Ehud's crazy because Ehud was left-handed, the Bible wants to make. Any, any left-handers out there? Better chance of being a president, I guess, odds-wise. I don't know. Uh, Ehud was a left-handed man, and he stabbed a, a big old dude, and his, the ar his arm got sucked into the fat of the guy, and he was on the toilet, and so it's totally, I mean, if you want to pick up, that's Judges 3. I know some of you, you're just like, I know what, I know what family's doing today. Football? No, that. That's what I want to. Then you got Deborah. Oh, I'm sorry, Shamgar. Then Deborah. And it's just the same thing, where the people are like, I forget about God. 
Oh my goodness, this is so hard. God, help. And God sends a deliverer. And it goes on and goes on and goes on and goes on. And so you get to this guy, Gideon. Gideon's this wild dude, all right? Because uh, God's like, you warrior. And he's like hiding in a bale of hay. <laughs> you ever feel like God calls you a name of what you will be, but you don't feel like it right now? Like saved, redeemed, set free. All right, so, so, so God shows up. Because here's how, here's how chapter 6 starts. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight again. So the Lord handed them over to the Midianites. Round one, we walk away from God. Round two, God lets hardship come. And so like they have all this economic hardship and family and land. And, and then verse seven, when they cried out to the Lord because of the Midians, all right, there's number three, the Lord sent, and all of the times it's been a deliverer, been a deliverer, been a deliverer, been a rescuer, been a rescuer. This time the Lord sends a prophet. Wait, what? So here the people are. They rebel again. They have hardship again. They're like, God help us again. And God's like, I think you guys need a sermon. They're like, we don't need a sermon. We're hiding in caves. We need food and weapons. And God's like, "Mm, I'm going to talk before I help. Wild. Because what has happened is this cycle is something I think we can fall to where we know the answers of who God is and yet we live in this spot where all of a sudden the hardship causes earthly regret instead of godly repentance. And I, I, I just want to push a little bit on the front end that are the changes you want And it's the hardship you're facing, creating the cry out to God because it's it's just hard. Or do you really, can you see ways that you've actually turned away from God? So many of us, I think we're like, I know I'm a sinner, but we're never specific. We we know we fall short, but we're never never transparent with God. I want to repent. Now, if you grew up in a church like mine, a Lutheran church, very conservative. You heard the message. You're a horrible person. But God, because he has to, love people. And so when he was forced, he eventually got around to you. And so maybe on your way out, you can remember how horrible you are. And one day God might love you. Like that's how I grew up, all right? There's a new generation that has grown up, though. I, my generation and those older than me, we grew up with an awareness that sin was offensive to God. That demanding my way over his way was the wrong way. And so we have a generation that's growing up with saying, like, who cares? It's hard. God help. Like, they've heard God helps, but they have a... They have a sorrow of regret that they have to deal with the hardship. They don't have the repentance of, oh, I walked away from God. Okay, so, so, so before God sends a deliverer, he says these words through the prophet. Hey, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought you up out of slavery. Our version of slavery, our version of Egypt is sin. We were, we were started there. And I rescued you from the Egyptians And from all who oppressed you, I drove your enemies away and gave you their land. And I told you, this is what I told you, I am the Lord, your God. You must not worship the gods of the others in whose land you now live. But you haven't listened to me. Next verse, God sends a deliverer. The deliverer was already on the way, but the message sometimes needs to land. Hey. Have you taken the eyes off? Is the change you want the change God wants? Is the who you want to be going to lead you closer to the God, the the God idea for who you are to be? All right, so I spent a lot of time on that uh, because I I, want to activate within us, am I wanting the change so that I feel good? Am I wanting the change so that I'm, I'm like a better me or am I wanting... I'm wanting to change because I just know it's better with Christ. He's done so much for me, and I just want to stay as close to that as I can. I can't answer that for you, but I want to create a little bit of tension. 
What's the change for? Is it to get rid of the regret? Or is it to turn around and get moving in the right direction? Now, here's the thing. God, God not only tells us what we can do to walk the right way, but he also gives us the power, something that the judges were lacking. But the Acts church is one where the Spirit of God comes and the power of God shows up. Now, the power of God, uh, this word power, it shows up 57 times in the New Testament. And, and it's the word dunamis. And, and it's where we get our word dynamite, right? Like, like this, is, this is the power. Like, who could use some dynamite inside of them? No, that would be bad. Like, not literally. But the power. This is, this is what God wants to unload and lock in us. And Paul writes, he says, I, like, here, here's the two things I want. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. I want to know Jesus because he's my Savior. And I want the power that raised him from the dead to live in such a way. He follows this verse up with saying, so I'm willing to suffer even death because I know, like, if that's what Christ wants, that's best. How many of us, like, I will change even if it means getting harder if it gets me closer to Christ. Are you willing to put yourself into a place where you will change into something that it's harder to do, more uncomfortable, like difficult, but it gets you closer to God? Or will you try to sidestep the hardships and just go after the crown that is promised? Like God has crowns for us. And I think so many of us, we're trying to claim the crown without picking up the cross. And, and, and so I... I it, it's quiet in a tumble. I don't know how Fairfield's doing or Centerville, but like, I feel like it's a lean in. They're like, whoa, preacher fired up. I'm totally, I'm all right. All right. He, Paul says this to the uh, church in Ephesus. He says, I pray they're going to begin to understand something. Like, if you could just get on the front end of grasping how great God's power is to help those who believe in Him, not believe in yourself. But I believe in God, and when my belief in God, I start to understand I've got access to this great power, not for more of me, but for more of him. And it's that same mighty power that we're talking about. It's so powerful, it raised Jesus from the dead. And he's seated at the right hand of God, the Father. So I want to share with you a little bit of like, what's it look like to walk this power into our life? And I'm going I'm to just share three quick ideas and again, I, I think for some of us, they might feel elementary. So I'm going to try to help spur you on in them. But the first one is this. God's power will cancel our past. God's power will cancel our past. Uh, I talked with someone uh, this morning. She said, you know what I love about this church? And she's been coming a number of years. And I said, what? She goes, people are funny. And I was like, I know, right? Like, I... I, I grew up in an environment where, where, where humor was always sin, all right? Like, it was off-color. Was, there was no Svenanolis, although there are some off-color Svenanolis. Be careful. If you're ever trying to find one for me, mm, this, this is dangerous, all right? And I don't have one on the spot. I apologize. I brought them up, and now I do that. That feels like sin there. All right, so, uh, but, but I, this person went on to share, like, not only... Are they funny? This is how they followed up. And you, and she points to me, are so willing to share all the ways you screw up, just like the rest of us. <laughs> That's what I love about our church. Our pastor sins all the time, just like us. It's the best church. It's so funny. <laughs> You're like, I knew what they meant, but I mean, like, you know, like, it's so funny how much you sin like us. That was what, that's not what was said, but it was what was said. And so, but I, I, I think this idea like that we all make failures, we all make mistakes, we all, we all, how many of us we wish we could get a start over? I think one of the brilliant things about the Bridge Church is I feel like we are a church of second chance. Those who feel like maybe God's given up on them, which isn't true, or they have given up on God, which happens often. The Bridge is like this place of like, hey, come. And honestly, if, you, if you're uncomfortable with people far from God showing up here, you're missing our main heartbeat. Our main heartbeat is that people who are far from God would somehow be connected or, or, or feel safe enough to explore, could God really love me, set me free? And, 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 and any time we, we kind of create judgment to those who are not where we are, wherever that is, like we, we actually damage 
the, the search mission that Jesus, he came to seek and to save those who are lost. And so I just want to be on the front end. Like we, we really are a, 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 a church where we welcome everyone from every place, but we're growing closer to Christ and Christ is changing us into who he's called us to be, not into who we want to be. All right. So with all that said, uh, failures and problems and bad decisions, like uh, I, I feel like in my, my counseling sessions and in meeting with different people, for some of us, what has happened in the past ends up becoming the windshield and the way forward becomes the rearview mirror. And so much of our life and perspective is shaped by regrets and, and pains and mistakes. If I wouldn't have met that person, if I wouldn't have done that, if I, uh, like, oh, and, and, and it really disables our ability to move into who God wants us to be. And that's why I think it's so powerful that God's power will cancel our past. And Jesus was really up, up front with this. Like in, in Colossians it says, you were dead. Don't, don't miss this. You were born sinful. Aren't you glad you came to church? You were born sinful right from the beginning. It was not looking good for you because of your sins and because of your sinful nature. Your nature was one that you inherited from someone else. Guess what? Your parents were broken too. And their parents. And I know it's frustrating and hurtful and all that, but like here, here's, here was this narrative. And, and, and one of the things was you were dead because sin was on you. And so what ended up happening was you needed it to get cut away. And then God made you alive with Christ because he forgave all your sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away. How? By nailing it to the cross. And then he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. Get this, your sinful nature and sin, like there's attachments that happen. And through Christ's power, we can cut off all of what that looks like. Now, when it says canceled, when we say forget our past, I'm not saying forget like it never happened. Ooh, no, 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 no. Like this idea of canceled really falls in line with uh, like eliminating, neutralizing um, I owe this, and now I don't owe this. And, 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 and I think this is tricky, and my wife challenged me in this a little bit, like, uh, for some of us. This won't apply for all, but, like, how many times have you paid a bill and then be like, so glad I paid that bill four months ago. Five months ago. Like, I pay my utility bill every week, or every month. And I have never been like, can't believe I had to pay that and I remember paying it like once I pay the bill I'm like I move on and I I wonder how many of us if when we confess our sins to the Lord and he forgets them why are we feeling like we are needing to hold them I I, I want to go into this a little bit more but um like my mind is like it's it's like at, like God's got an etch-a-sketch he's like listen we're going for here here's how, here's how Paul he's like I'm not I've not achieved where I want to be. I focus on something, though. I'm not focusing on the past because I'm forgetting the past. It's not that it didn't happen. It's just not, it's not going to limit to where I can go. I'm looking forward to what lies ahead. And I want to tell you, God's power can cancel your past. Here's the second thing I want you to know. God's power will conquer our problems. Now, I don't know about you, but it seems like everyone's got problems. You ever notice people share their problems with you and people will ask me how are you doing and um I, I have this phrase I, I, I got a little illustration maybe to kind of I, I someone called like I alerted me to this recently and yeah that's good right right here, right here. And, and the question they ask me is how are you doing anyone ever been asked that question how are you doing and, and I've noticed this, this has been my, some of you are like, what is he doing with a bed? I know. It's the only thing you're going to remember now. And this could totally not even apply to what I want to try to say, but I'm going to try it anyways. Here, here, here's, here's been my standard answer when people are like, how are you doing? I say, I'm pretty good under the circumstances. And I was challenged. Someone said, why are you under the circumstances? So, Let's pretend this mattress is circumstances or problems. What I'm saying is, basically, 
I'm, I'm pretty good under the circumstances of my problems. And when we're, when we're faced with problems, sorry, Serville, you can't see me so well. When we're faced with problems, what we go is like, well, now I have a natural excuse, right? I mean, I changed, but like, look, I changed, but can you see who I, like, I, I, I changed, but with, I don't have the resources, work on my budget. Do you know what job I have? Like, look, and we, under the circumstances, I'm doing pretty good. When can I tell you, you were never meant to be under your circumstances. You were supposed to be able to rest over your problems because your focus is on the promises of God. And I'm telling you, some of you, you need to get, you were never meant to be under your circumstances. Go ahead, you can take this off because that will distract me. Uh, I'm telling you, this is, like, where, where I got this? I got this somewhere. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll just go with scripture because that usually wins. We now have this lights shining in our hearts. It's warm under there. Like I tell you, some of us, we're suffocating because of our problems. They're just like, they're like, we start to like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And I want to tell you, the Bible never says your problems will go away. That's not going to change. Your position with them will. Your capacity to carry them will. God has called us to be more than conquerors, right? You know what a conqueror is? A conqueror is one who has victory over something. I'm going to skip this, even though it's super good, because we're pressed on every side by troubles. Like, that's just true. We're not crushed, though. We're perplexed. Yeah, the hardship, the hard things that are going on. Uh, but I'm not in despair. I saw another translation that said, we're not sure what to do, but we know that God knows what to do, and God hasn't left our side. And I think oftentimes we start to make allowances for problems to weigh heavier than what God ever intended for them to. And God's power can help us move over our problems. All right, so Romans, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or circumstances or problems or persecution or famine or nakedness? I haven't had that one lately. All right, or danger or sword? Like, can any of that separate us from God? No, 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 no. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We overcome by gaining control. And I, I, I'm telling you, it doesn't mean you manipulate the problems. It means you take your eyes and you put them on something bigger than your problems, which is the promises of God. And I know that sounds very cheesy and Christian cliche-ish. But I got to tell you, when you anchor to it, it can be the breath of fresh air you really need. That when you're feeling overwhelmed, God's never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me. When it, when it just seems like no one understands, he's closer than a brother. My, my, my promises that I, I rely on the most are ones that I know will happen in heaven, not on earth. But good news, God has put the church in place to usher the kingdom of heaven. Here's his prayer, that this kingdom of heaven would come on earth. And so we're already getting a foretaste of what that could look like. And so in the middle of hardship, we can have hope. And in the middle of problems, we can have peace because of who God is. I, I, I think so many of us, we're praying the wrong prayers. Literally on Wednesday, I looked at some of the prayer requests. And, and I'm not going to name names because there weren't any on the ones that I saw. But I honestly said I won't pray that. That's not, that's not what God... Listen, I... I will pray what you ask for if I think it aligns with God. But there are, there are prayers where uh, I'm not going to pray for the couple that wants to move in together and is not married. I'm not going to pray that. I think so often we want, we want the problems to go away. The, the early church faced tremendous opposition when they were standing up for Jesus is Lord and Savior. And they got all of this like, I mean, I mean, they were, two of them were thrown in jail and things. And this is what they choose to pray. Not that the opposition would go away. They prayed they would be bold enough to stand in it. And I'm wondering if some of us quit imagining this world where it gets more comfortable. It's not going to. But you can stand and rest secure above it. 
The problems and troubles will keep on coming. In this world, you will face many. But boy, what, it, what the power of God can unlock inside of us is my problems aren't my burden because my, my, my promise is the one who is eventually going to come back is going to set me free. I'm telling you, some of you, you actually need to reimagine how, what the problems are doing for you. Oh, he, Mark Batterson is an author. I like, he wrote this. In 1987... A group of engineers, entrepreneurs, and earth scientists set out to build an artificial ecosystem in Arizona, Biosphere 2. It was 3.14 acres, or pi acres, I guess, making it the largest closed system ever created. Designed as the ideal ecosystem for plant life to thrive, the climate-controlled environment included purified air, clean water, nutrient-rich soil, and natural light. Despite what seemed like perfect conditions, something curious kept happening. The trees that were planted would grow to a certain height and then they would fall over. And so they're like head scratching. The scientists finally figure out what was missing. The biosphere lacked a crucial component for growth. You want to know what it was? In their natural habitat, trees are buffeted by winds that blow every which way. And trees respond to that wind resistance by growing stronger bark and deeper roots. Without adversity, trees atrophy so do people I'm wondering if some of us we're trying to get ourselves into a dome of protection and you will never grow to the height, the root structure and the strength you need listen, problems, they, they're gonna come but God's with you he's got his power in you, we got one more, God's power will change you we got a whole nother sermon here we might just rewrite the series, we might just add a week There's two parts to how this works. The first part has, like, you can't do. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. To be in Christ means you just you just surrender. It's not me. It's you, Lord. This is a, like, my faith is in Christ. My faith's not in my faith. Jesus died on the cross, took away my sins, rose again. He's making all things new. And... And so that's the first part of, of God changing you, is you just saying, I can't do this on my own. It's a salvation moment. It's this moment where you just become honest with God and say, I, I'm a broken mess without you. And then the second part, I don't even know if I have any more slides. No, I don't. I got scriptures all over here. Uh, the second part comes from Philippians chapter 2. It says, continue to work out your salvation. Now, listen, you didn't earn your salvation. God won you salvation, but the idea of working out, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, work hard to show the results of your salvation. Work hard to show the results of what God has done by obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. God has given you the power and the desire to do what pleases Him. Keep working out the response, because you have saved me, God, I am going to desire to grow in your power to walk the way you have for me. We say that we are the loneliest people that have ever existed in humanity. We've disbanded, like we used to be so tribe-oriented and family-oriented, and now we are so isolated and we are so selfish. And we, I mean, we, we've, we've pushed every community aspect out, and then we are suffering. And so secular remedies now, not biblical remedies. Secular remedies are actually finding the best, the best way to do something is something the Bible actually has advocated for thousands of years. And they're, they're, they're now doing something called social prescribing. And here's the two things. Uh, find some friends and do something meaningful. Find some friends, do something meaningful. And I share this because if I want God to change me, I, 
I, I need to come to terms where I need his power, his spirit, but I need other people. I need the church. So if you're, you know, expecting the small group pitch here, yeah. Yeah, I am. Because you, you've tried the other ways. And I'm just telling you, God wants to change you. Last thought. Think our capacity, our ability to change hits a different pace when we can get one thing right. And that is, he's not just Savior, he's Lord. And I, I think so many of us, we want rescue without acknowledging that he's king. He calls the shots. His way is best. And in his kingdom, there is protection and security. But anytime we say, like, I don't really want your way, Lord, we subject ourselves to hardships. And I want to just invite you back into a moment of maybe not earthly regret, but heavenly repentance where you just say, God, I need you to be Lord again. And the best way to make God Lord is by making him first. You you just did that. You, the, Yeah, we're having church here, but but bigger than that, you, you said you're the first part of my week, God. You're the first part of my week. Maybe you give them the first part of your day. Doesn't even have to be two minutes, but you just say, God, I want you first today. Maybe with your resources, you give him first. Like there's, the, if, if he's Savior, he has to be Lord too. Does this make sense? So if he's Lord, he's first. Father God, I pray right now that in our own minds, in our own hearts, you would help us to apply our next step in this. Is there a moment where we need, need to come clean and say, I, God, forgive me. I've walked away. The story of rebellion is mine. Maybe for some of you, you've, you've, you've hit this spot where the problems they seem bigger than a mattress. They, so God, I pray for a, a holy hope right now. Pray for a, an easing of burden. Pray for a friend. Pray for healing. In my spirit, I'm sensing there's some who are just struggling with grief. Who was with you is no longer with you. So you hear this idea of forget the past and you don't want to forget. And I want to just say there's, forget the sin of the past. Don't misunderstand the words there. Jesus, I pray as we leave your peace, your kindness would radiate over us. We're your kids. May we not leave here with shame and regret and more work to do. May we leave here empowered by your spirit. We're grateful for you, God. We love you. We pray this in your son's name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Church, I believe there's so many fun things happening and I got to tell you there's there's also so many challenges. I know we got donut runs or whatever we're going to go eat and things like that, but if you could maybe today or this week I'd just love to hear how God's working and has worked in you. He's worked in you as a father. Maybe he's worked in your marriage. Maybe he's worked in your spirit life. And you can write that on your connect card or you can email hello at the bridge church at CC. You can text me. I mean, I'll read it. If you want me to do my cell phone number, 641-799-0636. If you want to share like, hey, here's what God's doing in my life. Can I tell you that'd be encouraging to me? 
On your way out, you're going to pass the blue joy boxes. They're called joy boxes because we read in Scripture, God loves cheerful givers. So if, if you are like, then you, you can just walk on by today. But if you're one who's like, no, God, I love putting you first. It's my act of worship. That's where that can go. You can text to give, and you can get on our website, thebridgechurch.cc, to do other giving. If you need small group help, stop by Next Steps. I love you. We'll see you Sunday or sooner.